This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, hello world, hello Mordic world, and hello Leon. Hello there. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, it's uh, Mordicast time again, and uh, I'm so excited because, you know what? Yeah, it's Mordicon. No, no, yeah, be but yeah, it's coming out. And also and, uh, it's episode yeah. 19. Yeah, yeah so yeah. <laughs> every, every day it's a little bit of Mordicon already over here. <laughs> um, and uh, it'll be part of this show too, but we have a ton of other things that we want to talk about yeah. uh, including a fascinating conversation with Juan Fach who is with Salesforce and mm -hmm. uh, gives us his perspective on, on Mordic and um, what he thinks Mordic can do in the future yeah super interesting yeah um, and yeah speaking of Mordicon we also have a couple of goodies for you today first timer uh, with <laughs> vouchers for the training day part and we have free tickets and uh, uh, free boat trips no no <laughs> boat trips it's all virtual um, yeah that's uh, later in the show uh, let's get started with our baby ourselves and that is of course Mordic we have seen uh, Mordic 3.1.2 Two and hey. yeah, there was a drum roll by 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 <laughs> Ian. I'm not sure you heard that. Um, yeah, uh, three point one point two is out. It is a huge improvement over the previous two versions, which uh, were a little <laughs> bit buggy and uh, had some Just annoying little, little <laughs> things. And I think this one is much better. My personal highlight is that the bounce handling is finally. Uh, back to operational uh, <laughs> the one with the IMAP, IMAP monitor um, what's that postfach uh, <laughs> uh, uh, inbox inbox yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> um, yeah but uh, li little things here and there it makes it much better then uh, let's talk tutorials uh. that's <laughs> yours of course yeah, we have uh, a couple of tutorials we will talk about today. The first one is by Dane Menk from Cactus Automation in California. And he created a super good tutorial about uh, Mordic email sending and which yeah, sender is used when you send an email. Yeah, that can be tricky, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There, uh, so he made a very, very good tutorial about that. And our friend Joey Keller also made two very good tutorials. The first one is uh, about campaign logic. And he went out into the field and made a field study about uh, yeah, when campaign actions are triggered and wrote an article about that. Yeah, there's such a lot of confusion, confusion in that field and it, it, you can't really explain it too frequently. So thanks, Joey. And uh, everybody have a look. It's super good. Yeah, you should definitely take a look. And he also made a, a tutorial about the multilingual double opt in campaigns, which is also a topic that can be quite confusing. So check it out. And talking about tutorials, which is super nice that the community knowledge base finally launched. Oh, who did that? Yeah, um, kind of me, <laughs> without padding my own shoulders. Yeah, it's uh, work by me and the community. Yeah, and it's a collection of uh, community-contributed articles about different topics of knowledge, which kind of is important, but not too formal to be in the normal documentation. So things like how to do a double opt-in campaign in two languages or uh, advanced campaign logics would be super valuable topics for the uh, knowledge base. So if you dear listener out there have a tutorial then please share it with us yeah let's let's uh, look at these examples here would would you now reach out to joey and to dane and say uh, and ask them to give you the okay to um, have that on modic.org or or do you wait for them to to uh, reach out to you or um, how does it work as i stumbled across those articles i would proactively uh, go on to them and ask uh, if we can f make a copy of it yeah. and uh, publish it in the knowledge base and uh, give them full credit that they wrote it. We just want to have the knowledge. We don't want to yeah, um, undermine what they created. Okay. So we would also give them um, the correct links and everything so they will get uh, yeah. the traffic that they deserve and yeah. I would yeah, go and the fame, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Okay, good. Um, next up is uh, a thing that's kind of 
coming up more frequently now, and that's uh, uh, workflow automation, and uh, not in, in the sense of, of a Mordic campaign, but, but the interconnection between systems. Uh, so traditionally, we've had uh, Zapier, yeah. uh, Integromat, and others. And there are new ones popping up now. N8N is one thing we did mention before. Mm-hmm. Um, even there is more movement now. Uh, my f- friend Khalid Samer from Jordan uh, pointed out to me that, that uh, he, together with Josu, are now pushing to for a more uh, comprehensive integration with N8N. Oh, that's great. And I'm currently trying uh-huh. to, to uh, fix an interview with the guys at N8N because th- this, that sounds like a pretty promising solution there for multiple reasons but but okay stay tuned then we have a public connect now uh, that's um, an additional product from uh, pebbly who are famous for uh, their subscription billing service mm-hmm. um, so that's another third-party integrator same issues with, with GDPR etc potentially for those who are concerned but for others it might be a an alternative worth looking at and uh, just like everything else you will find the links at the show note of course and then um, there's a familiar name with once again Joey Keller who um, is also active in this area by creating uh, a process or describing the process how to uh, integrate anything through a webhook uh, without uh, external or third-party tool. So, so no intermediate. Just use a webhook and uh, and um, you have at least part of the same effect. So for for them for for some things, this is a generic uh, solution that actually works. Nice stuff, <laughs> as always. <laughs> On the wah, in the, in the area of third-party contributions or, or uh, add-ons, basically the marketplace, uh, there's also a stream of things and we had to, to mar- make hard choices, which <laughs> we talk about today. True. Uh, one that I, I'd like to mention briefly is the form actions for Mordic uh, by our phone, fr- friend Kusmani. Um, that's mtcxtendee.com and the link is in the show notes. What this thing does is it takes uh, anything that's submitted in a form and rather than, than sending it or writing it to a contact field directly, it gives it a chance to m- manipulate, to change, to merge, etc. the field data and then write the result, uh, the result into a contact field. So if you have a form that has first name and last name, you can actually combine that into a single field if you like, or you can strip the email domain or, or, or extract the email domain of an email and uh, s- send that to a different field and so on. So it's a variety of options there and it's basically tweak uh, logics for those who care. Um, then next up is a Trello plugin from our friend Adrian Schmidt with Idea2 in Switzerland. So he's part of the German language community. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he did a native uh, connection into Trello, which is uh, cool, really. Great work, yeah. yeah. And one more thing that I'd like to uh, mention, it's uh, not really new, but, but <laughs> again, uh, time and again, I show it to people and they are excited about it. Little tips about uh, PHP Storm set up for Mordic. So if you are a developer and haven't tweaked PHP Storm uh, for Mordic, here's how. And that's once again a little little bit of a tip from MTC XTND. Very cool. So next up, um, you you notice that we're racing through the stuff, <laughs> and uh, again we had to leave out so many things. Um, one thing we did talk about previously uh, um, is the wish, the feature request to save UTM data uh, in the database. So somebody comes to the website and we want to capture the original original UTM data. Uh, there has been a tutorial by Chris Calabro, famous from the newsletter. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and he's describing how to capture that within a modic form so that is existing technology you can if you have a form you can write the utm data to a contact field oh, nice. um, so if that's what you're looking for if you have a landing page for instance that's probably already good enough so worth a look but beyond that another name that uh, popped up before and that's adrian from idea2 adrian w did another thing that was a uh, PR basically, so a code uh, snippet, a patch for Mordic to allow M Mordic to capture UTM data, exactly the thing that was requested in the feature request. And uh, that's basically, or pretty much falling from the sky. Thanks, Adrian, for that one. Very cool. Yeah. Next up on the list, we also have a thing about a Mordic community. Uh, Roof wrote uh, the community roundup for the third quarter of 220. Um, the link is in the show notes. It's a very precise article about the roundup, just like every roundup. And yeah, she's putting a lot of effort into rounding up the things. <laughs> <laughs> and you should definitely take a read if you're interested in it. It's link in the show notes. Yeah, check it out. And now, as mentioned in the beginning, our interview today is with Juan Fach, who is uh, not exactly from the Mordic ecosystem, but uh, a related world, and that is the Salesforce world. He's a, a Salesforce professional. He does have experience, uh, pretty so solid, pretty long term with Mordic. And uh, obviously, he has some, some different perspectives than of we course. would. Yeah. For instance, um, the size of, of potential projects with Mordic. I am a little more optimistic <laughs> that he is than he is, but that's understandable because he's, of course, a, a Salesforce person, a part of person. And um, nonetheless, I think there's a lot of valuable insights in the interview. And here we go. And there we go. Welcome, Juan Fach. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to contribute or express my point of view on your questions, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Um, before we go into the questions, let's start by introducing yourself. Um, so who, who are you? Where are you located? And what is, does your professional life look like? Okay, my name is uh, Juan Fach. I'm, I'm a uh, Salesforce deployment manager for one of the global um, automobile companies. And I'm, I'm involved in Linux uh, and open source since in 1995. I started with one of the first version of Red Hat. Oh. Uh, I'm original from uh, Cuba and Dominican Republic, but I have been living in Europe uh, for several years, almost a decade. And... I'm working as a Salesforce uh, deployment manager. I'm a Salesforce certified, but also I have been involved uh, looking very closely to some of the solutions of open source. And one of them is, have been Mautic since uh, 2014. So one of the things is that uh, my relation with Mautic has been uh, in and out, uh, trying to look the evolution of Mautic and using in in different type of organization, a small business, or uh, having them for suggesting for the nonprofits. Um, my my relation with the marketing automation in that case has been mostly for the lead generation, B two B business, and uh, nonprofits. Okay, so um, let's step back a little bit. When when you say Salesforce deployment, that that's basically the CRM that that you help customers with, I guess, and and that also ties into marketing marketing automation there. But that would rather be part of, I guess, right? Uh, yes. Um, well, save for deployment manager in that in that case is the is the role that take care of implementation of multiple solutions of mark of. Uh, Salesforce in the platform, and in that case, uh, I'm in charge of of deployment of multiple solutions. In this case, Service Cloud, Service Cloud, and and one of them is uh, could be Pardot for the B2B. And yes, Pardot is more into the marketing automation for Salesforce, and it covers all the communication and the B2B and lead generation, and but also is being used for. 
uh, for the nonprofit uh, arena or sector also, and also has been being used for education cloud uh, in order to promote and to uh, establish the communication with the students, uh, with the partners, and all this, uh, this using similar um, sometimes very localized strategies like a, like Amaric is using on the platform. Mm -hmm. So give us, give us a little bit of history. How, how did you first discover and get in touch with Mauric? Okay. Um, well, as I mentioned, uh, since uh, in the year 2000, uh, I was in Dominican Republic and uh, we were working on the, on the marketing agency. So from that point, we were start using the common email marketing uh, or email uh sending solutions that were in the open source uh, arena. There are multiple uh, solutions. So around the year 2014, I started looking uh, in the in the open source communities that the Maurica started making some noise. So I started looking for the solution. But at that time, it was very, very simple. And since then, from time to time, uh, I come back and I look at what Maurik, I, I I'm using Maurik in my own domain. But I still looking and seeing uh, the evolution on different features, um, because I'm in the middle of a bridge between the consumer or the customer and the business. I look and at Modic as an alternative uh, for marketing automation that could be uh, feasible for those companies who cannot uh, afford or they are not ready for using uh, Pardot. So Mautic is, I consider the Mautic plays a, a very relevant role for a small, a small business and companies who are using in, in not even Salesforce, they are using any other solution, even Excel, uh, but they can start doing some market automation with their own business or website, their own consumer website or their e-commerce. Either they are using WordPress or Magento or even Shopify. Mm -hmm. They can start using uh, Mautic and this is a very good alternative. Uh, once the user have migrated or they start using Salesforce, for example, they still can use Mautic as an alternative. Uh, I think Mautic could be very interesting for the a small business up to the middle mid range business, uh, twenty or fifty employees, um, which is uh, is uh, the where I see very good potential uh, for Mautic. Uh, either connected to Salesforce, or I want to be biased uh, for Salesforce, but I think that one of the topics that we that I I think I can mention is that mm, Maori could be a, a very good alternative. Yeah, um, yeah. As as an early adopter or a early user of Maori. Uh, I think you also experienced long years of frustration because so little things were, move, were moving, etc. We are now in a much more dynamic phase. Um, but you told me earlier that you were not satisfied with with the current capability, specifically of the Salesforce plugin for Mordic. Um and that's one thing that pops up. Uh, again and again, obviously, the, the importance of, of deep integrations with various uh, CRM systems, including Salesforce, very prominently. So can you describe to me the perfect integration that you would dream of? So if, if you have a, an example, that's, that'd be fair, or, or just certain features that you would uh, consider the, the really high end, not just the, the basic things, but, but what would the perfect one look, look like for you? So for as I, as I mentioned, uh, it's a very good point. It's very good that you bring that, that uh, topic to the, to the table. As I mentioned, as a, as a, um, as a bridge bet, uh, between the stakeholders on the company, when any company it could be a 10 employees company to 1,000 employee company, when you are discussing how the marketing automation strategy will be, uh, we have to take into account that uh, we can use Maudic for lead generation and b2b let's let's focus on this in this um on this b2b scenario mm -hmm. uh, i see that the modic have not been doing a very deep 
analysis about the uh, the feature from the business per- point of view and business perspective. So you look into, or let's just say, some people say that they are happy, but I think that the interface could be more, uh, the UX can be more simplis- simplis- uh, simplicity. I mean, so they can simplify more the interface. They can make a more UX experience uh, uh, smooth. So they can just go into that. Uh, this is one of the things that I can see that they should be. I haven't seen the Mautic interface uh, for for the operation change uh, since a long time. Mm. So let's go back into let's go into the capabilities of uh, Mautic, the the email the email interface um, for building emails. is is absolutely uh, not comparable if you, <laughs> if you are if you are looking at solution like for example. Um, BeFree.io is a mail builder that they even can do a, a collaboration. I'm not saying that it's going to be for free. I'm saying that they can make a collaboration. Uh, they, this is one example that I like a lot uh, as a mail builder or, or landing page builder because the, the interface for, for building uh, is, is more weight advanced than the actual email builder that it does one of the key things integration with other solution that could be um, essential for businesses is like a, a analysis for litmus uh, you can have yeah. integration and analyze your your email for the campaign we're talking about business orientation and business point of view and um, those are the things that the customer will love about to modic to have Another, I'm not saying that they should be even for free. I'm saying that they should be the integration with the light uh, version, and then they should be for but email builder is something that is. Then we jump into Salesforce for integration. I look at the the integration of Salesforce, and I found I found uh, Salesforce is getting more and more and more advance into the um, wizard for integrations and wizard for configuration. I don't see that happening in the Mautic uh, interface. I see that the integrations are mm, not changed for the UX experience uh, for better and the integration with Salesforce is one of them that needs to be reviewed from the bottom. And one of the things is that our integration has should be uh, uh, first need to be able to focus and to target the main objects of Salesforce. It could be lead, contact, and, and accounts, and then opportunities. <laughs> Because when you are building the journey, this is what uh, the competitor is doing. So mm-hmm. that's what the Pardot is doing. The Pardot enables you to communicate with the major object, and that's what Mautic should focus on that in order to be competitive uh, into that middle range uh, companies who are going to be deciding between budget and features. Yeah, let, 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 let not- me hop in, in here for a second just to make sure I get this right. Right now, we do have, or conceptually in, in Mautic, we do have contacts and companies. And that's it. We do have anonymous contacts and we have known contacts. And there's this mapping that allows you to say, okay, I want to sync my contacts with the leads, with the uh, contacts in in Salesforce. I'm not sure about opportunities. I don't think so. Um, The the conceptual or the the design, the database design um, on the model on the Mordic side will probably not change. So the, the other thing I could think of, think of is is to flag a contact in in Mordic and say okay this one is an is an actual contact on the uh, CRM side or it is a lead on the CRM side or, or whatever and to be able to map it on that level because we we can deal with different entities but but only with one at a time currently no but I'm I'm not saying about flagging an entity I'm I'm gonna give an scenario you are mm-hmm. you are um, in the in the journey. Mm. That is uh, that you are capturing uh, a form from uh, in Mautic. Uh, Mautic uh, for the form is Mautic is capturing from the website, mm-hmm. and then you the 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 customer is interesting into having a, an installation of Mautic, and then 
it happens that you are connected to Salesforce. Yep. And that is going to become a lead. But at a certain time, you start doing a nurturing campaign with the customer. Yeah. So you are start sending information, what is Maudic, what the Maudic can do for you, et cetera, et cetera. And, the com and at one point of the flow of the journey, the customer is ready to pay for your service of uh, implementation. So yeah. and that moment is when you are going to be able to go into the lead object of Salesforce and change a value and do a checkbox on that saying you are ready to call that customer right now yeah. so that's what the that's what Pardo does and yeah. that's what i think in the in the in the capabilities of maudic should be able to be able to talk to salesforce in the right in the right time without going well, through the database of this oh, i think it can, can absolutely do that it, it, that that's a campaign action called push to integration and then then there you have a selection of all the um campaigns in, in the crm etc so I, i think we're more yeah, there than you think about, you are talking about campaigns I'm talking yeah, well about okay that, that, that is now that's a workflow it's a little, little bit of different wording in, in on the modic side okay so but i'm talking about i'm not talking putting a customer in the campaign i'm talking about going to the lead object who are are you ready push it to Salesforce and, and and changing the value that it's going to be triggering a, a workflow on Salesforce in order for the agent oh, to be okay. able to talk to call the client. Yeah, okay. You want to have more granular access to the properties exactly. in the, in the exactly. object on the, I'm the not, Salesforce I'm not side. Saying, I'm not saying um, only for for putting data in uh, pushing data into Salesforce that, or synchronizing data because mm -hmm. that synchronization is okay. When you are t when you are using contacts and accounts um, in companies in, in Mautic is for the normal, I would say um, uh, it kind of a standalone uh, usage of, of, of uh, Mautic. When we are connecting to Salesforce, I'm, I'm looking into more reliable Uh, flow of data between Mautic uh, uh, data and and also in real time to Salesforce. I cannot wait. If you are talking about going back to the my point or my position is that when you are talking about a business that is generating 20 to 50 leads per day, you cannot wait until the the Mautic decided to synchronize the data. So I want you. To, I want to be able to right in now uh, right uh, right away go into the lead object and say oh this customer is already ready for 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 buying or ready for for interaction and then mm -hmm. i'm gonna put this flag and this is still gonna do another process on, on safer that's what i was uh, trying to say at this level but this is a a business point of view a business approach uh, mm -hmm. is more is more than technical is more than coding is looking at modic like a Oh, I can be on that segment of the market in terms of uh, marketing automation. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm referring with the with the uh, what I'm referring to the to the to the companies who are working for Mautic and developing things, or even to the core developer of Mautic. Yeah, why don't we look more into the business sides of Mautic? rather than to say, oh, okay, yes, I'm I'm strong in the marketing automation. Yes. It is strong, but it is. That's why maybe some of the business uh, are not looking uh, into into more into Mautic. Yeah. The yeah. other thing that I would say that I have my notes here, I think, is about reliability. Uh, to to be able to trust that nothing is going to break whatever happened into the process or maybe update or installing a plugin uh i think that that is still even myself and or looking at the forums every time that you look into a on a great something happens in maudic or even or or you have to invest too much into into the process of updating or uh, you need to have a, like a, a double system at the same one is for keeping the update and the other is for uh, the stable system you can have that but for example in salesforce we don't have this issue when you upgrade you upgrade period there is no nothing breaks and this is something that i see that a lot of people in the the modic community are complaining Ooh, what is going to happen now if i upgrade this 
Yeah, well, <laughs> that's of course a, a mixed bag. If if you use, I mean, there are now multiple SaaS services for Mordic, which take away that pain from you. Uh, but of course, you have to pay pay for it. And if you decide yeah, decide for self hosting, then yeah, it's it's still not that mature yeah, that you then wouldn't then want go, a staging then, system. That's right. Yeah, but when if you take that approach, that is very good that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We are going back to. We we are not going back. We're going back to the discussion on the table from with the stakeholders. So remember that the stakeholders in the company are always looking at business reliability and budget. So if I found that I'm using Modic and it's very good, but uh, I'm, imagine that I'm a safer user. I'm using Modic as an alternative for not uh, going into a full uh, spec of, of safer solution. But if, the, if this solution is dragging me down in terms of uh, business operations and budget, because I need to maintain uh, servers, I need to maintain this, the stakeholders are going to start considering alternative for, for not having these uh, headaches. So we need to see, that's why it's very important that we need to think as a stakeholder or, or CEO or um, CTO of a company who are being under pressure for the management and say, oh, listen, how many times are we going to have this issue of, yeah. of a marketing automation tool failing? That's yeah. a, that's a conversation. They're not. They are not. Uh, they they don't even know that the Mautic is open source. They don't even want to know that Mautic is open and source. And they shouldn't. They shouldn't. That's right. And I I think it's a good point that you bring this up because uh, there, there's also, I mean, there, there's those customers, the higher up, who just want a system that works and somebody that that guarantees for that and gives an SLA in it. And there are also exactly. agencies exactly. that that rely on on a certain tool that make a decision for a, a more marketing automation tool without that agency themselves be, having to be technical. They just want to use a tool that exactly. works and does a job. And exactly. so that, that's a big movement in, in the Mordic world too, where uh, having that SLA currently not from from a uh, from this um, open source project itself. So there are companies in the in the ecosystem who are giving that sort of support and guarantees. And um, th that is a bit of a game changer, I think. Um, so, yeah, I agreed. And still, on the feature side, well, there's, there's room for improvement, but we're pretty good. I think we can do more than you have seen so far when it comes to Salesforce integration. On the business side, I agree that, that uh, that's still not there yet. It, it's it's too fiddly and, and, and things. And... Um, a lot of potential still. Um, I, w I would like to to ask you about one specific thing, though, when it, when it comes to integration. Uh, in your experience, in your world, did you ever try uh, external workflow automators like like uh, Integral Mod, Zapier, NADN, things like that? Would you recommend going that way when you want to integrate, say, Salesforce with any other system? Are you using things like that? Uh, yes, um, it's a very good point that, I, that you mentioned that. Yes, I, uh, I have integrated Salesforce with other systems. And for example, in the, in, in, in the actual job, we are using uh, MuleSoft. Um, but as I mentioned, MuleSoft could be a high, very high end uh, for the small business or any other business who are not considering have, having this. There are multiple solutions of, of this. Uh, I would say that for integration, there are two things uh, or you want if if the if the data flow is not required to be real time do mm. you, you have a lot of alternative if the data flow do not require real time and and high reliability into the data do you are not required to have the data right now then there is a lot of alternatives like Sapir and all that. Mm -hmm. Also regarding security and regarding uh, data transformation, if you need that. So if you are in the high ends, it, there is also plenty of solution. One of them is, could be MuleSoft or others. So for example, one of the things that you mentioned about Sapir is that if your business is not required real time, okay, you may use Sapir. Uh, if your business can hold to have 
uh, a downtime or maybe a, 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 a connection issue of the data uh, and you can hold for a couple of minutes, uh, even up to one hour, then Zapier could be an, an option. But if your data flow requires critical and connection, mm, like an e-commerce or this and that, I would say that I will I will take the position like uh, the other uh, with the stakeholders. You you wouldn't be very happy to be on the meeting where they say this is not communicating. We have a lot of issues. We have a lot of data loss, and then uh, you find out that is because you are using a third party. Then if you are in Europe, you need to also consider the GDPR. Of course. So yeah. you are giving your data to pass through another system that you don't know if they are making a copy of it. And I'm not saying that the, those uh, organizations are doing that. I'm saying that from the compliance point of view, you have to go to your compliance manager and, and prove that your uh, data flow is compliant according to the GDPR process because the auditors are going to come and say, no, I don't like it. I don't like it the way it does. So that's why I suggest, or you use an API connection uh, mm -hmm. if it is possible. Uh, the, obviously, if you're using a third-party connection for the API, uh, that is going to increase the cost for the, for the business. Uh, that's another topic that we should see how, how API of Modic is, is going. I never use the API of Modic, but that's going to be another uh, potential mm, business niche for those who want to build solutions connected by API of Modic. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, critical. Absolutely, it's a very very big point. And there's also movement there. We have NADN as a self-hosted solution, which takes away the GDPR uh, issues, which is very promising. And um, yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's an entry or a light lightweight solution. But if we want to be more serious, then then you need the native integration or a completely integrated solution. Which brings me to um, the question, after all, you're a Salesforce person, which, which is uh, uh, not hard to tell. Um, mm -hmm. And in our world, depending on where in the world you look, we, we run across people who use Mordic or try Mordic or, and never ever had an, an actual proper CRM system. So they, um, they just may even start of thinking that Modic is now their CRM, which of course it is not. And then they um, look at what uh, what would they use for CRM. So let's talk about Salesforce for, for a second and uh, give us a quick pitch. Why should people take a closer look at, at Salesforce? Okay, Salesforce is, not, is more than the CRM right now. So Salesforce at the beginning was a CRM. Right now it's a platform with a lot of solutions and a lot of prices. So a lot of um, a package that they, any any company. So you can start with Essentials. So that's the best option that I suggest to any client. Uh, you start looking at Essentials. If your business are a small business or middle middle size uh, business, up to 50 or even a crew, uh, 50 users, you can start using Essentials. Essentials is up to 10 users, but it's a very good, very good entry point for uh, managing, automating, and organizing your business. So stay, uh, staying away from your crazy Excel sheets or maybe your your databases or your complicated uh, data uh, cleansing and all of that, you can keep your business organized uh, in this. Uh, yes, it's, there is a lot of uh, CRM solutions in the market, but I think the number one uh, right now, uh, without questions, is not because I say so, because I'm 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 very involved into the into the into the ecosystem. A, a lot of organizations are showing that it's not a perfect solution. They have some drawbacks, I would say, in some in some aspect. But in general speaking, for anyone who wants to start having a CRM in their business, uh, I would suggest to, to take a look. They can approach any CRM partner, uh, safer partner, and they can uh, have a demonstration. Start with the demonstration. 
And, okay. And there is a lot of, uh, uh, as I said, there is a lot of plans or package or pricing. You can start with essential. You, know, you can, as long you can connect essential to Mautic, and then you can start evolving uh, onto professional. All of that. As much as you get your business on top of Salesforce, you're gonna have more. Uh, reliable, organized, uh, maybe you start doing a lot of uh, uh, automation, uh, lead generation, and you're going to start seeing the, the real value of having a CRM uh, like, like that. Okay, give me a good link for, for starters or two, and I'll put them in the show notes. Um, okay. And on the other, other hand, with all your experience at hand and, and all the market insight that you have from different angles, from, from the part of the angle, from, from the CRM angle, from the open source angle, what, what is your message to the Mordic uh, community and to the Mordic ecosystem and to the open source project? What should we concentrate on? What should we... Um, what markets should we go for, et cetera? What, what, where do you see the potential and what, what's your recommendation? I will, let me uh, suggest, because I'm, uh, say, I would say that there is three points, business niche, business support, reliability, and, and a smooth integration with third parties in general. Mm -hmm. But I would say business niche, The uh, Mautic can have a very good position in the ranking in the middle, in the small, in the small, when I say small, it's from two employees, four employees, up to 20 or 30 or 50 employees. In that range, Mautic can be very effective uh, as alternative solution for those companies who are uh, promoting a B2B or Uh, non-profits or a small business or any level and e-commerce that wants to do but they need to look into the business perspective they need to go out from the open source and sit with the client and said those are my problems from from the customer point of view also don't assume that there is technical people on the business that's so uh, that was my mistake too i always think that because i know everything on on the on the technical part I assume that those people knew what I was talking about. I was wrong. That those people don't know anything about technology. They don't know. So we need to make the the inter the UX uh, of the solution more easy to for them to understand. Because be, we are not gonna be always with the client. The client can kick us, and they they say, "Well, it's open source. I'm gonna keep it." So fine. So the client is gonna say in a couple of the weeks. Uh, this solution doesn't work and there is going to be someone else with a solution that is having a more easy and friendly interface and is they're going to win uh, and at that point. Business support. There should be a more uh, business approach uh, for all of them, for all of the companies who wants to have a Mautic working without downtown. Not a 90%, no, 99.9%. And when I install something, uh, my operation doesn't work or I don't have to rebuild the journeys. I don't have this. And the reliability on upgrades and on, on, on anything. Uh, and also on the business uh, connection. There shouldn't be not only connection to uh salesforce in a smooth way like uh, like we say like windows so you say next 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 and the co is connected because it's happening on the on the other solutions why we cannot have a modic and also connection to uh, the more popular solutions on on the, from the business side uh in a more easy way uh in a more reliable way that anybody can do it so that we can focus on the business rather than in the, than the, in the technology. Mm -hmm. so Excellent that's point. One of the things. Yeah. Uh, no, thank thank and, you very much. Oh, you got more. No, no, no. It's um, this points, and we also we need we need to uh, because I always come back to Mautic, and every time that I'm working, for example, with the nonprofits, uh, I I try to suggest because also you as I mentioned, you need to look into into two points, two sides. The, the customer don't have the budget or the customer is not ready. These two things. If the customer is ready, then maybe they doesn't have a budget. And in that sense, you can evaluate what, uh, based on the requirements of a client, what is going to be the right solution. For example, mm -hmm. in the case of a nonprofit, you can go ahead and propose 
Matic. But if you, if for example, if I go to Matic and I found that it's not ready for giving that to the client and and leave it alone uh, with the with the Matic. Uh, I'm I'm feeling that I'm gonna be betraying the customer because I'm go the customer is gonna say you bring me this and it's not mm -hmm. working as I expected, yeah. and then my reputation is gonna be in, in question. So that's one of the things that I always feel that uh, in some cases Maudic is not ready yet in that point. For the rest, is very good. It it, do, it does the work, but I think it's from uh, the Matic, uh, the core people at Matic, or maybe the core people uh, mm. very active. I would say with the Matic community, mm. can can start looking more into the business side. Yeah, uh, they can I, choose. I was, they, mm -hmm, yeah, I, I I've been thinking why why you said all that, and I think this this bridge between the business needs uh, and the actual development is is uh very critical and um so far it's it's not like like the core devs go out to businesses and ask them what what, we, what they need it's, it's the other way around it's like modic agencies the whatever project manager sales people whatever whoever is actually talking high level to to customers need to be able to feed that back into the core development and uh, we're, we're coming up actually with with a format um, for that where we have some tiny little teams tiger teams for feature areas like like crm integration or whatever your issue is email builder and um, they uh, they will rely on an input like that and we will try to formalize that and give a give a way of, of giving input like that into the development and make it happen really rapidly so that's one one good thing and the other thing that i like that you mentioned earlier uh, when we talk when you talked about be free template builder um is the notion of integrating paid services into modic i think th there's nothing wrong with it it, it it's an absolutely valid uh, business model and, and it's enriching modic and and if there's a like a freemium version of that even better and we we may want to motivate people into doing more like that looking into it reaching out to to complementary services there's all sorts of services like uh, like like we we as an agency we we work with uh deutsche post for sending post postcards out of modic which is of course a paid service or we work with databases um who can enrich uh or who can deliver company data even for anonymous contacts uh, which is a paid third party service etc and if we have more like that then that makes modic only better and it's a win-win situation for everyone so yeah. Now, now that you now that you mentioned that, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go back to the to this topic, but uh, look at the from the business point of view, from the business perspective, when you are open Modic and you have a small team of two people uh, doing email marketing, and they are gonna build that. Mm. When you present that email builder to them, they say, "I cannot work with that," mm. because so you want you. I want to do no more. Uh, nicer, more responsive, more reliable things on on this. I want to do, uh, for example, some uh, all of these. I cannot do it with this uh, with this builder. I need yeah. to go. And then when the most of the client is doing, like you are aware, they do they are building the email at size and doing that inside. That means that you need a developer outside. So why why don't we put everything on the same solution and we try to cover all of that? Because marketing people are very demanding on on that so, i mean marketing the ones who are building the strategy not the ones who are coding yeah yeah of course and and the email builder is a really visual visual thing everybody can easily grasp it and e easily criticize it um on the other hand there's a lot of movement there with multiple projects going on to come up with better email builder so i'm optimistic there too Juan, thank you so much for your time mm -hmm. we're recording this on a saturday and i really want to let you go back to your family um thank you uh, very much for having was, me it was it, been a pleasure it was fun to, to have the in, in, uh, insights fr from from uh, um yeah i would yeah competition so to say but also someone who who is part of the Mordi community so i welcome you there even though you've been there earlier than me <laughs> um no, no. 
And I thank you so much for your contribution. I, I hope we talk soon again in the future. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks. Anytime. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. We as an agency already worked with the Salesforce integration, and I think it's a bit more powerful than Juan hmm. thinks it is. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. But again, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm very thankful for his time and uh, uh, sure. his openness. And um, yeah, we'll things we'll can see always get better. That's yeah. for sure. Good. So speaking of getting better, Mordic uh, 3.2 is coming down the pipe. Uh, the sprints are scheduled for uh, November. The one, uh, it's a, yeah, two sprints basically, one before, one after <laughs> Mordicon, and then we'll have an, an RC, and the general availability release is uh, scheduled for November 30th. Yeah, yeah that's not, it's too, not far too far away. Far. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. And then, uh, yeah, last up, Mordicon once again. Check it out on at mordicon.mordic.org. Uh, the website is up. The tracks are there. The, the, the exact schedule is still pre preliminary, but we have six tracks and a ton of content. Yeah, it's a, huge a lot of work went into that. Yeah, so get your ticket. It's it's really cheap. It's uh, pay what you want basically, starting from five bucks. Uh, it's a it's supposed to work the way that that uh, those in the developing countries. Uh, don't have to pay much yep. whereas the first world countries should be able to pay like 20 bucks or something also uh, sponsoring is still appreciated uh, a lot of sponsoring sl sl slots are gone by now but yep. but for 1500 or 2500 euros you can be a bronze or silver sponsor still um, we do have a training sponsor that's os training open source training uh, who do a training day the day before Modicon? So put that into your calendar, and make sure to use a coupon code OST Modicon 2020, uh, which gives you 20 percent off a already very affordable price point. Nice. So <laughs> check that out. It's also at Modicon. Uh, dot mordic dot org and in the show notes. And so last up, we always ask you to. Uh, spread the word about the Mordicast, which is what we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, for instance, on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, today, uh, or this time, it's, it makes m even more sense to do yeah, so if you want to get a free ticket. We have a couple of free ticket because, uh, tickets because we are, are a sponsor ourselves. So do mention hashtag Mordicon uh, in the social media. Do mention the Mordicast, at Mordicast. Uh, and uh, use the word ticket or whatever you like and we will recognize it and uh, give you a free ticket as long as we have them. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Looking forward to hear you very soon. Uh, so stay safe, take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Cheers.